Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here on Wednesday. The most important thing that happens on Wednesday, for sure, is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Why? Because Hawaii is the state of clean energy and because we are trying so hard to use our renewable resources, you know, to make it work and get off fossil fuel. And uh, we study this and we think about it and we talk about it and we argue about it and we try to make little steps uh, to get there every day. And ThinkTech wants to cover this, and so does the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, which supports this program. Anyway, uh, so today we're going to talk about cooling our buildings uh, with, uh, with Honolulu uh, seawater air conditioning. Let me call that HSWAC. Do you mind yep. me calling nope. that HSWAC? We do it all the time. Okay, that's Greg Wan. Uh, he is with Honolulu seawater air conditioning, and he's been, you know, responsible for making it happen. Is that a fair statement? One of the people responsible, yes. Okay, all right. That's a fair statement. No pressure. No, no. There's a lot of us, but. <laughs> okay, we'll ask you about that. Um, and for the moment, we have Hawaii Energy in the, uh, the negawatt moment because we could not possibly do Hawaii State of Energy, clean energy, without the negawatt moment. You know, and the truth is, and I've been thinking about this lately, is the best moment spent, you know, the best way to get off fossil fuel is none other than not using electricity. If we do that, it, you know, it's like that doesn't cost anything. Absolutely. All you got to be is disciplined. So Carolyn Carl is here, and she's with Hawaii Energy. And behind her, whispering in her ear, is Rob DeVerturta of Hawaii Energy. Whisper, say, say, he's waving, but I don't hear him. Aloha. There he is. Okay. <laughs> Carolyn, I know you can do this by yourself, but if you want to take advice from Rob, it's okay. Oh, I learned to stop doing that a while ago. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop doing that. <laughs> so what kind of tips and tricks can you give us today, Carolyn? Well, you know, we're the Energy Conservation and Efficiency Program for Hawaii, Honolulu, and Maui counties, and we are here to provide information and rebates about how to save energy. And a little while ago, we did our first round of energy saving tips for the summer, and now we're in full swing in July, and it's hotter and getting hotter. So we wanted to talk about some other Greg energy saving. Greg knows this. Yes, knows absolutely. This. <laughs> it's, it, we're have some, I have some other good tips for, for the home. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was our rebates for solar attic fans. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of solar attic fans. No, tell us. But these are pretty a pretty cool piece of equipment. It actually doesn't use any electricity. It uses the sun's power to draw heat out of your attic in you know, a solar fan during the day when it's the hottest. It helps you reduce your cooling load in your house. And we actually offer a $50 rebate for, for purchasing a solar attic Where fan. Where do I get one? You get one. Um, there's. You actually can give us a call. We can put you in touch with a licensed contractor that will be able to install. Oh, it has for to you. be installed. It does need to be installed. Yeah, because you're cutting into you know the roof. And so, does it require uh, electricity or does it nope. operate independently? Operates independently. So uh, you're you're basically sucking out the warm heat during the hottest parts of the day when the sun is shining. Um, so you know, typical. Wait, wait. Yeah. I don't know about it. So you got to pun punch a hole in the roof for it. Yeah. You do. And then what do you put outside and atop the roof that there's that a makes vented it fan? A vented fan with a solar panel and on it. And the a solar small panel creates a little electricity to move the fan. And it moves the air up out of your house and into the atmosphere. That is out of your house. Exactly correct. Okay, that, how that how wide is the hole? Um, you know, it depends on the size that you're looking to cool. I'm sure some homes are a lot bigger than others, so it, it's sized appropriately to ensure the equalization of pressure and, and um, all the important things for the space in which you're, you're looking to cool. But it's vented down into, um, you know, through the, the roof. And, um, so how does, it, how does it protect the house from water might come in the hole? Oh, I know that the, the licensed contractors ensure that all the se appropriate sealants is in place so that you're not looking at any sort of degradation to your rooftop. And you don't really actually need to have an attic. You can have an ordinary atticless house which many houses in Hawaii are. Absolutely. You know, I was just talking to my friend, also a colleague at Hawaii Energy, and she has the same thing, and it vents right into her living room space. So it is, you know, um, called a solar attic fan, but it is specifically for, you know, drawing out the warm air from an open space. Typically, attics have the, the highest heat, in, you know, when you do, when you have that space. It sounds like something everybody should get, honestly. I mean, because... You know, the most uncomfortable part of the year in Hawaii is when it gets all hot and muggy, and all you need to do is get that hot air out of your house, right. and you feel so much better. Right. So, uh, okay, so they, they could call you for a list of possible yeah, contractors? Yeah, we can, we can help. We can set them up um, with, you know, a recommendation for, you know, 
folks that do offer this as, as something they sell and, and, and install. And the, beyond the solar attic fans, we also offer a rebate for whole house fans, which work in conjunction with um, you know cooling your house. It, they're vented through your home. These do require electricity, but they allow you to draw in all the cool air from the outside and pull it up out of the house. Um, so when you turn on your AC after that, the house is much cooler to cool down. So we, we offer a rebate for those as bigger, well. Bigger rebate. Bigger, for There's bigger. more money involved. Yes, that matters. is correct. It is yeah, more, yeah. yeah. So this is a $75 rebate. But again, similar, we have a, a list of contractors we can put you in touch with if, if that's something you're interested in installing. Perfect for a summer discussion. Carolyn. Absolutely. So Okay, anything else? Or? Oh, absolutely. So for those of us that are lucky to uh, enough to have a pool, we do have rebates for energy-efficient pool pumps. So everyone knows if you have a pool, you need a pump, but you may not know what type of pump you have on there. So you want to take a look, because conventional pool pumps pumps run at one speed all the time. Well, there's higher efficiency pool pumps, variable speed pool pumps that allow you, that actually modulate. So they're not running full speed all the time. And we, guess what, offer a rebate for that as well. Just being smart, clever, that's yeah. what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much is the rebate on that one? $150. Okay, that means it's more expensive. It eh? is. Yeah, you know, right now our average pricing is a, is a little over $1,000 that we're seeing for, you know, yeah, okay. But there's a lot of energy involved. Absolutely. And a lot of energy could be saved. A pool pump, a typical pool pump uses about 20% of the energy in the home, so you can reduce that significantly by, by installing the variable speed pool pumps. Okay. Yeah. Have we come to the end of it? Um, I can for give today? You, for today. I'll All be right. back with more very soon. All right. But Promise me. I, oh, absolutely. <laughs> always. But you can always give us a call at 537-5577 or visit us at hawaiienergy.com for more uh, information about both our residential and our commercial rebate program. Carolyn's terrific. You know, the Negawatt moment is going better and better. <laughs> you guys, you know, are very skilled at it. You're talented. You're interesting. And, you know, you can answer my questions, which is something. <laughs> Thanks for coming For down. now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. We're going to take a short break, and then we're going to get back to Greg Wong. And by that time, we believe we have information that makes us believe that Ray Starling will be joining us at the table. I think I see him now. I'll be right back. I'm Jay Fidel. Come and watch Agritech in Hawaii on Mondays from 4 to 5 p.m. Uh, we'll introduce you to farmers, uh, agricultural officials, agricultural experts, and academicians. You'll learn about agriculture, which is very important in Hawaii. Come and watch us. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asia in Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Olalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And Bye. on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha. Hello, I'm Martin Despang, and I'm the host together with the one and only Ali Amashta, and our show is called Urban Transcendence. And Urban Transcendence is about identifying where we have a unique situation of a vibrant city in one of the most beautiful natural environments. So how these two can coincide, sometimes conflict, how they could find reciprocity in the 21st century is what we're excited about. And we're planning on bringing in uh, a diverse body of, of guests, both from the arts and the science and the established and the wise and the emerging generation. So hope you will join us. We'll always be on on Thursdays from 1 to 2 p.m. Thank you. Okay, we're back. We're live. This is Wednesday. And therefore, ergo, may I say, ergo, it means uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy today. And as you will notice, uh, Ray Starling is now at the table. Uh, joins us as a host. So we now have two hosts, and poor Greg Wong is in the middle. Okay, we're talking about HSWAC. That's the uh, Honolulu Seawater Air Conditioning. And we're talking about cooling our buildings with HSWAC today. So the first thing is, uh, you know, we've been talking about and looking at and <laughs> sort of, you know, testing on possibilities. I mean, this, this technology has been cooling and providing, uh, what, air, air conditioning services for NELHA, for 
20 years, you know. Uh, <clears throat> and it's been discussed downtown for at least, what, 10, maybe more. Um, so here we are today, 2014. Um, you guys, last time I looked, you had most or all of your permits, and you were ready to do some dramatic things down Alakea Street. So how about a status report, Greg? Yeah, um, mostly right about permitting. We have most of our permits. We, there's a lot of permits for a project of this nature. Um, you know, mostly we're, we're in city streets, we're in state streets, we're going out in federal waters. So if there's an agency that gives a permit, we probably talk to them or have a permit from them. Um, we are still uh, waiting to get our final federal EIS. Uh, it's, it's, we see the light at the end of that tunnel, which is, was um, a very long process. So that's good for us. How many years? Uh, almost old as me, but um, no, I think it's on its seventh or eighth year through the process. This is a great country, oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the state EIS went, went uh, relatively quickly because uh, we did do a state EIS as well. And that was done, I believe back in 2009, it was completed, so that was done. Um, so yeah, that, that's one of our biggest last hurdles for the permitting process. Mm -hmm. um, and really what we're focusing on right now is customer commitments. We, we've done a lot of the engineering, we've done a lot of the design, so we pretty much know how and how much it's going to cost to build, because um, that was a big hurdle as well. As I mean, coming in and digging up Honolulu streets isn't exactly an easy task, and, and being able to do that as a private company, uh, especially not an easy task. So we, we have all those plans in place. So we're pretty much ready to go there. Um, contractors are ready to, quote unquote, start digging. Uh, we just got to write them a couple checks. So well, it's, uh, it's a moving target. I mean, you could, if you tell a contractor in, say, the year, I don't know, 2010, <laughs> that you want him to do a certain thing, and then tick, 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 yeah. four years go, go by, he's not ready to do it at the same price. No, no, no. Um, that's part of the challenge with doing a project of this nature is to getting all the pieces, because there's so many pieces that need to be fall into place uh, in the right timing and, and timing together. So uh, really right now what we're focusing on is our customer commitments, because because we're project financed, it's going to be paid for by the customers. Uh, there, there's not... Um, a single like utility or government agency that's going to pay f to build this out and then let the customers come. We need a certain level of commitment from those people who are going to use this system over the years to actually pay for it. So uh, that's a challenge in itself. We have a... What, what a, does that mean? I mean, are they going to actually give you the money that you need to meet your budget and do the construction? Um, no, actually what it does mean is that they commit to paying for the service for a certain number of years. And then you bank that. And then we bank that, exactly. Okay. So it's it's kind of like when you go and pull a 30-year home mortgage and, and the <laughs> lender looks at your, your uh, credit score and, and how much money you make in each year. So you know, we need those kind of assurances that we're going to make our money over the years and yeah. providing service. On the so. state EIS, do, does that have a termination date or a cannot exceed before you, you actually have to be using it? Did, it did in Turtle Bay, but it was you know, like 20 years. So. Okay. Yeah, it's a good question. Right? I don't know. Yeah. Th that hasn't been something I've been aware of, so I'm, I'm guessing it's <laughs> not something we're up against uh, imminently, but um, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, I wasn't part of the EAS process. I, I um, You know, I, I think that uh, when you're talking about only a few years, how long has it been? It's been, what, three, 2009, years? 2009, so four or okay, five years. Five years. <laughs> it's, it's getting up there, but... but um, they should be understanding, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's not long. It's not yeah. like you're taking your hand time. off the stick. You've been <laughs> trying every day. <laughs> For sure that's a challenge with the permitting issue, because because some of the permits do have shorter time horizons than others, and um, trying to get those lined up so that you, know, you don't have some lapsing and, yeah, and some well, don't, yeah. or you know, and some are, are still waiting. So um, I know that is a challenge for us, and, and re renewing permitting and mm -hmm. making sure that we don't let one lapse. Because when you got so as many as this project has, it tends to you know you get something, you put it in the file it away, and yeah, four or five years well, later yeah. it comes up around again, and yeah. Yeah. So you sort of have the critical mass that has to come together all at, within a a few moments, if you will, in, yeah. in time, or months mm -hmm. in time. Well, yeah, right. You know, I mean, you're, you're alluding to a major problem in terms of development in the state. You know, we can respect the environment. We can respect all the interests of all the constituents for all the agencies. It, stake, it's, it still takes too bloody long to get a thing going. It does. This it's is very a long difficult. time. It, I mean, it's well known that it's hard to have a business in Hawaii uh, just because it's it's difficult, it's expensive, and 
and uh, and the permitting, especially if you're going to be digging up streets and the, the sorts of things that um, that uh, put you in different regimes for getting EIS uh, permits and all of the other things that have to come together. It's I tough. Think, I think it was actually written in the Bible in the Book of Job. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, I mean, you know, this is, uh, I mean, you, you hear these stories all the time about various, the bigger the project, the more the permits, the longer it takes, and the harder it is to coordinate the permits. And then, um, I don't think it applies in your case, but there's one situation where you have to have uh, something from the state government that says you got all the permits. You have to have permits saying you got the permits. And that's really tough to get. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. anyway. Yeah, and it works both ways because it's, it's risk for everybody. Um, and you know our customers and like i said right now we're up against where we we need a certain level of commitment from customers and and as a customer they understand that there's quite a bit of risk from a developer to actually getting projects completed so uh, well, let's talk let's talk about that i mean we we know that the uh, the difficulty with uh, seawater air conditioning is it replaces the chiller and on an office building the chiller is going to be worth a lot of money replacing it's worth a lot of money and so you, like Ray says, you got to hit it at the right moment in, in the continuum was the word we talked yeah. about. Okay. <laughs> and so if the, for example, if the landlord has just put a million dollars into a chiller, it's, he's not going to be really intrigued about putting seawater air conditioning in there because he's already made his investment. Not right now. But, I mean, but come see. Come they see need him, him and, now. Uh, they well, need okay. him at a moment in time. Nobody can wait on this. They've got to get, as you said, their critical mass together. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, I mean, what do you do? You tell a landlord, hey, hold up on that chiller. But he may or may not hold up yeah. on that chiller. Yeah, that's a challenge for sure with this project, as long as it's taken for us to uh, get to where we are today. You know, we're, we talked to some buildings where exactly that, that issue was a, a, an issue 10 years ago when we first started looking at this is, hey, I just invested in brand new equipment. Uh, I'm not going to win the walkway from that. And then almost in the same light, because it's taken <laughs> so long to get to where we're at today, now they're almost in the... The other end of that spectrum where they're saying, hey, I need new equipment now. I can't wait for you because you're another two or three years down the road. It's true. You've been through um, one useful life yeah, of a big oh, chiller oh, a big chiller. <laughs> and that's one of the advantages of this program. Um, you know, district cooling in general and district heating and district energy is you kind of get out of that cycle. I mean, it's just this never-ending cycle for property owners uh, to maintain some of this equipment. And, and um, it is a struggle when you're looking at introducing something new, especially like this. But... We've, we see that as a huge advantage for once it is implemented for a property owner, you know, they, they don't have to worry about those equipment cycles because that is probably one of the largest pieces of equipment and it's never ending. I mean, you buy it new, you have a couple honeymoon years where it's under warranty and operating um, and then problems are going to come up no matter what and then eventually you're going to have to be up against that decision of replacing it and big dollars and uh, okay, do, you know, is now the time? Do I, do I wait? Or, so. Yeah. It, it's kind of a never-ending cycle, and, and we've had to work through that, um, introducing our product for sure. So, from from a um, you know, I guess a planning point of view, what what kind of arrangement can you have with a building where you don't know exactly when you're going to start, and they don't know when you're going to start, and so but what you want to time down because you need to time down to bank the you know the income stream mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the program. Um, what do you say to them? Uh, what kind of what kind of agreement is that? Well, this, the simplest way that we look at it is that over the life of our service or the life of a, a normal chiller life, say 20, 25 years, whether you just bought your chiller today or you're going to buy it, you know, 10 years or 25 years down the road, it, over a life cycle cost analysis, it's going to pencil out that you're going to save money. Whether you just bought your chiller and you're going to hook up with uh, Honolulu seawater air conditioning or a seawater air conditioning type service, but most people have a shorter time horizon. You know, they're looking at one or two year increments. So, it, it is a challenge, and there's there's probably there is ways to overcome some of those. Uh, whether it be deferring cost, uh, recognizing that the money is going to be spent later, and, and w w we can take payments later down the road to offset some of those things. But um, I don't think there's a one solution for everybody. You know, each each well, property owner, each building has its own. Is that your way of saying that the contracts with the buildings are different? Yes. And yes. the negotiated terms, the economics, are different. Right. Wouldn't you, see, be... you see right through my. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, listening it, to the buzzwords the, here. <laughs> the um, the uh, 
the original concept when, when we came in was everyone wants the same deal because everyone, you know, you're going to look to your, your neighbor across the street and say, hey, they're getting something different than me. Um, and, and that's the way some of these programs are set up is that, you know, every, costs are the same across the board. Everyone shares costs. And that's the way we kind of structure this to begin with. But then going out and actually trying to, going out and selling the product, we realize that people have different needs, even though uh, it's all about cold water at the end of the day. But financially, it doesn't work for everybody the same. So we've, we've since restructured and said, OK, we, you know, we're willing to work with you because each property is different. And everyone eventually is going to pay the same. But um, you know, it's from your end, yeah. It's yeah, going to net out the same way. Right, right. But from but their point of view, they have their own expectations and demands. So right. it's almost like you begin the negotiation by saying, well, what would you guys like? Yeah. <laughs> and and that's, that's what takes a long time because most people with air conditioning, right, you might be experienced this. But I think a lot of people, they don't really know what their air conditioning really is uh, all about. They, they have it in their building. You know, you go buy your chiller and you buy this and you have your, your engineers on staff to operate it. But there hasn't been a, a di a, such a different alternative than Honolulu seawater air conditioning in the past. So when you're really forced to take a look and see, okay, what what is this that I have, this air conditioning thing that I have, it, it takes a long time to get educated as to what it really sure. is. Sure, and as soon as you educate the building management, then new management comes in. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to educate them. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not that's too far from There's actually. a cycle where people um, sell, the, sell the buildings. Mm -hmm. And, and so point. if you catch them at the wrong time, it's not ready. Well, to, it's it's yeah. not ready to pop. You know, so to the speak. problem is when you know when the building is being sold, they're not thinking about expectancies. They're thinking about what contracts are in the draw. You right. know what leases are in the draw. What are your mm -hmm. assets? What are your liabilities? Oh, sure. Don't tell me about visions. Tell me about what what's in the balance yeah. sheet. So they're not going to care, and probably they're you know the new management is going to make a new decision. Yeah all over again. <laughs> yeah. And we do have the opportunity to be working with several different types of customers. You know, like you know, ones we're talking about right now are sort of the commercial real estate properties. But within our district, we have uh, local state governments, federal governments, condo associations, um, uh, and, and utilities, some, and some hospitals. Some of the government agencies have uh, publicly said that they're, they're, they're going to join, right? At, uh, did I? Yeah. Um, well, we have the federal building signed. The federal on. building, okay, yeah. Signed? I that, I, yes. I yeah, forgot whether that was out yet officially, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, the federal building has agreed to, to become a customer. Um, you know, and just from our standpoint, working with a federal contract, it, our, our standard contract def definitely does not fit into a federal contract. So, no. you know, that took a long, long time for us to sort of massage everybody's sides. And, and How do you get by, get you know, procurement uh, requirements and all that? Um, I <laughs> Sorry, I asked you that. Yeah, it, it took a lot of um, a lot of telephone calls. Uh, um, okay, but because uh, it, it, it's a unique product for them as well, you know, utility product. Uh, it, it's a little bit outside of the pr normal procurement box. Yeah, it's not like a lot of competition right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I'm definitely no procurement expert, but it, it took a lot of work. And um, similarly with the state and city governments, we're we're working with them to, you know. Make the product fit with what they can procure and and, and within their rules. So I mean, do you do you have a, a number of buildings pinned down? I mean, I'm happy to hear that you got a federal building, but you know, do you have contracts going on? I mean, where it's like signed, yep. and and they're obligated to come along with you the minute you turn it on. Yes, we have signed customers. Uh, we have a limited area of service, right? I mean, uh, one of the challenges with these projects is you can't just kind of circle the whole island and say we'll yeah. go wherever. Right. whoever wants it not um, yet anyway not yet not yet maybe one day but um so we kind of set circle our little area of downtown a little bit of kakako and say okay we, we know the customer base there and this was done seven eight years ago when the first projects first started going on and made contact with all those people and the initial interest was was all there is it continues to be there uh, but now we're uh, at varying stages of contract negotiation or education of the product and Obviously, some are more interested. Others are taking maybe maybe a little more wait and see approach. Uh, I can understand a lot of buildings. You can say, you know, Greg, when you when you got it all in the little package with a bow on the top, give me a call. Right. You right. Know. And, uh, uh, our contract isn't 
that thin. It's not that thick, but it's uh, it's 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 quite lengthy and takes some time. It does take some time and effort uh, from both sides to to get through it. Um, so uh, it's it's not an easy product. That's you know? probably another building calling. You yeah, know, right. You want to sign up? Yeah. Oh. You better take that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break, okay? This is uh, this is Think Tech Hawaii today, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Because it's Wednesday, the guy in my far left is uh, is uh, Ray Starling, co-host, and the guy in the middle is Greg Wong, and he's with uh, Honolulu Seawater Air Conditioning. We're talking about cooling our buildings with HSWAC. We'll be right back. I'm Jay Fidel. Come and watch AgriTech in Hawaii on Mondays from 4 to 5 p.m. Uh, we'll introduce you to farmers, uh, agricultural officials agricultural experts and academicians. You'll learn about agriculture, which is very important in Hawaii. Come and watch us. Aloha, my name is Willow Chang Elion, and I host a show called The Art of Life. We air live every Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. And what we do is basically we focus on individuals who create a unique sense of place for Hawaii. These are movers and shakers, artists, innovators. They are also traditionalists. They're all involved in the archival process, and they make this place a unique place, one that makes Hawaii a richer place to be. I hope you do join us and certainly tell your friends about the show whether they live here or they live abroad it's a way to give back to our community we're keeping it Pono. Okay we're back we're live we're here Think Tech uh, on Wednesday in Hawaii the state of clean energy with Greg Wong of HSWAC Honolulu Seawater Air Conditioning Ray Starling joins me as host we're talking about cooling our buildings with HSWAC and we're sort of getting a status report on on how you know that is all doing so <clears throat> make me a building poof you're a building sure make me a building and here i am give me the vision of what this is going to do for me why i should consider this and you know at the end of the day how much money am i going to save or shall i say how much money are my tenants going to save <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know jay the, most times the focus is the savings um obviously this project isn't free for us to build so there, there's considerable cost to becoming a, uh, you know, it, it's not a, a zero-sum uh, proposition for a property. hundred million? Uh, north of 300 oh. to build. Oh. Uh, oh. I mean, with, our construction costs are about 250 million and then there's some other development costs. But um, the, the beauty of, of the seawater system is the voided electricity. And what that does for you is it you switch out your energy models from this volatile market that we've been in with HECO. I mean, everyone's trying to keep their costs under control with, through all kinds of measures. But it, at the end of the day, it's still a volatile market. You know, something could happen tomorrow and costs could go up again. You know, we saw some pretty steep increases in like 2011 or so, or 30% increase in a year or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if that happens, though, I mean, if that kind of thing happens, they're going to be beating a path to your proverbial door. Right, right. I mean, uh, for good or for bad right now, at, at today's, you know, whatever a building's paying about 34, 35 cents a kilowatt hour, we're kind of right, you know, the, the savings is almost uh, marginal. It's, it's, it's moving around a little bit. Yeah. So if we were at 40 cents a kilowatt hour, 45 cents a kilowatt hour, uh, the, the savings goes up considerably because we have our costs are pretty set in the construction of the project. Um, so the real advantage to our system is stabilizing, offering a stable piece of your energy cost. I mean, air conditioning, we estimate, is anywhere from on the low side 20 to the high side 40 or 50 percent of your energy bill goes to air conditioning, a, a big building. Um, so for a kilowatt hour, what? It's, it's, it's cutting it in half then. Right. I mean, it, it's not cutting your cost in half, but what it does is you're, you've diversified your energy portfolio. You use a sort of a stock portfolio analogy, right? Yeah. You're no longer vested in this uh, highly volatile um, HECO market where, yeah, we could bring in LNG, we could bring in wind, we could bring in solar, costs could get uh, pressed down, but what if something else were to happen, the costs were to go the other way? Now, this is only going to affect air conditioning. It's not going to affect yeah, any it's only other affect air conditioning. electrical service right, for the building. Right. So, so there's still quite a big chunk of energy there that's still in the, the HECO market that can, that can, you know, it, we don't affect, but, um, you know, you, you really are switching out a model where you're paying HECO 
for all of your energy to a, a model where you can be paying a substantial amount of your energy. Well, to, and, these, and it, to I, I speak of downtown office building. They use, I mean, air conditioning is really important. Right, right. And these these firms, I mean, in a closed building where you, you know the windows don't open, mm -hmm. you'd better yes. have the yep. air conditioning on there. You're going to be in trouble with your tenant. Right. And and so uh, it's an important part of the, you know, the product that you're offering these mm -hmm. tenants. Yeah, and. Uh, Another benefit of our system is we're on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, some of the strategies for buildings to save energy is to turn your air conditioning off. You know, I, if you try to come and work that. out on Sundays, you know, there, there's an air, no air conditioning. Yeah. Um, air conditioning hours might be getting shorter, or Saturdays are getting cut. You know, to try to save a little bit of uh, energy. Um, but you know, what, what would the building product be if you could run it 24 hours a day, seven days a week? I mean, could you have people working in your building all night on the weekends? So, so, but you still have to have electrical energy to run the uh, the, the the fans, right? And the blowers. Yeah. yeah. It's just the chill water, but the chill water is a big percentage. The, uh, yeah. Do you have a number for me about if I take an air conditioning system, okay, and I'm using X percent for the chill water, mm -hmm. and I'm using Y percent for the you know fans and blowers and all that stuff. Uh, how much of the total is the chill water? So DBED did a study of office buildings in, Hon or in Hawaii, and their number is about 34, 35 percent for the chillers and the cooling towers, the electricity there. The fans, I can't remember exactly what the number was. It, I don't know if you know, Ray. Is I, it I don't. It's 30 or another 20 or 30 percent just for the fans to circulate the air, um, something in that, that frame. I'm more concentrated on the, no. the chiller and the sure. cooling tower number. Yeah, the chillers sure. and the cooling tower are the big draw. Mm -hmm. So uh, where, where does uh, Hawaii Energy fit in this? Uh, I surmise there's a place for you, Ray. Uh, uh, yes, there is. Uh, in fact, uh, even before uh, Hawaii Energy came into existence, uh, the PUC had already established uh, that they were going to uh, allocate funds for uh, seawater air conditioning. Um, remind me, is it $300 a per ton? Time. Correct. Right, uh, $300 per ton. And that's a substantial amount, and uh, and that is um, so on that's installation. There. On installation. Uh, y yes, whenever whenever it goes into a particular building, uh, then the uh, three hundred dollars uh, per ton installed would uh, would be uh, given to the. Uh, so uh, to, we don't well, know what a, what a ton means. I mean, for uh, say a one block office building downtown, how many tons? So I'd say the average office building downtown is about 500 tons. So, so. I, I can't do the math. It's too late on a Wednesday. <laughs> but that sounds like $150,000. No. Yeah, it would be the, the rebate from Hawaii Energy. It's a substantial rebate. So that's an encouragement to the building owner. I mean, mm -hmm. has it worked? When you, when you tell them this, Greg, do they start salivating on their shoes? Uh, it helps. It definitely doesn't hurt. Um, it, it's not the... Um, it, it doesn't answer everybody's questions because there's still quite a bit of costs associated with subscribing to the service, so all those costs have to be vetted out and everything. But, but it definitely does help um, ease the blow of, you know, right. like we we're talking about it's earlier. It's a sweetener. That, the, the rebate program is designed to do that. Uh, on certain rare situations, we will get we will rebate a hundred percent of the cost, usually for small businesses lighting. Uh, that, that's a program that's ongoing now. But on most of all of the other rebates that we give, uh, we couldn't afford to buy 100% you know, no, everybody. No, we can't. Really. So we, we do something less than that. Generally, on average, it's around 25% of the total cost is rebated. And that, that pushes people over the edge to go ahead and do what, what we want them to do. And they ultimately save lots of money after doing it, but you need to get them to jump, right? And that's that's sort of the mm -hmm. the reason why there's a substantial rebate on on these um, uh, the product I'll and the services that. <laughs> uh, that Greg is is going to be uh, serving. You know, but this is the other element to that, and I, I think it goes directly into the model for uh, Hawaii Energy is that it's a nod. I mean, by that, it's a government nod or an official nod, and it, what it's saying is. This is a protected activity. This is an activity we, right. you know, the government who it's a good presumably idea. knows about this, a good idea. You should do this. We're with you on this. It's not fly by night. It's real. Mm -hmm. 
And when you say that, I mean, it's more than just the money and it's more than just the economic incentive. It's a sort of philosophical thing to say you're in the right, you right. made the right decision. For the executive, you know, who doesn't want to get criticized with making a decision, you know, uh, you know that, that that's a loose decision. This helps to defend his decision. You know? All right, and that's an important point, Jay. That the rebate is actually for all seawater air conditioning projects, not just Honolulu seawater air conditioning. But if another project were to to develop, then they can take that same rebate. So, well, I, I uh, yeah, so I want to I want to uh, go down that trail. Um, so. Uh, there's a pipe. There's a pipe. Lots of pipe. The pipe is the <laughs> pipe is out beyond the medical school. Yes, uh, Kakaako is our intake pipe. And it goes how far out? Uh, it's about four and a half miles long. Oh wow! It's about oh, well, about it's uh, 65 inches in diameter. So you could basically walk through the, the pipe. That's taller than I am. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a big pipe. Um, and it's uh, will be deployed in about 1,750 feet of water. Now, now there's a shelf out there at the reef. You know, this would be, uh, where would this be? This would be uh, not Point Panic, but closer to downtown. Yeah, closer yeah. to downtown Farm channel. Farm trade zone out. there. Yep, yeah. yep. And Medical so it, it goes, that, it goes, it goes uh, along the reef, I guess, uh, relatively flat. It gets out there four and a half miles, drops 90 degrees. Is that No, it? no, the top uh, bathymetry uh, uh, out there isn't quite like that. It, it actually drops quite fast after you get out about uh, half a mile offshore. So it takes a pretty steep drop, and then it gets a lot more gradual, and a gradual slope. So it's, it's definitely not a, one of these. We would love it if it was a 90 degree drop and we can get as deep as we wanted to. Um, we would be able to save a lot more energy than, than what we're looking at. Now what's the comparison between the pipe they try to use for the medical school? They try to do this for the medical school, it's, that's but, a different but they couldn't process. get far out enough or something. That right? one they dug well straight down. Yeah, straight down. Um, um, right, right, right at the coastline. Yeah. Oh, right at the school. So they, yeah, they were staying in the ground. Yeah, basically. vertical. Yeah, they, yeah. They were that not didn't really work because they couldn't get it cool enough. Yeah. Right. The, the yeah. plan was to pull up mm -hmm. water of a certain temperature. And they just couldn't get. You have to get way deep in order to get the temperature uh, difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not a ge geologist, but when you drill straight down through a landmass, you know, what kind of water you're going to get? Um, I think it. It's a little different than when you actually go out to the source and. You're pulling it from, from where you you know the temperature. You are an engineer. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a musician. Uh, no, I'm a pretty bad musician. <laughs> I try. But. <laughs> okay, so then that was that was, um, and that didn't really work. I think it worked in part for the medical school, and they had to bring in old-fashioned electrical power to do the rest of their air conditioning. But this, and you learned from that because mm -hmm. you saw what happened. Mm -hmm. you know, this is back around 2002 or three with the medical school. Um, as I recall, it was after the school was actually finished and, the, and they were sort of trying to get everything together and that was a loose end. Um, and so now, having learned from that, uh, you're going to be able to get water that's sufficiently colder. Yeah. That's and you, you need to get it because the landlords require it to be a certain temperature on right. delivery. This is a yep. big issue. And um, you have got to find a way to get them that temperature because right. they're going to want a guarantee from you yep. about exactly how. So how cold do they want it? How cold can you promise it so to be? Our product is relatively simple, I like to think. It's just water that's been treated. Fresh water. Fresh water, not salt water. We deliver you fresh water that's 44 degrees Fahrenheit. That's it. Simple enough. Simple enough. Yeah. Um, but how do the, you get it that How day? do we do that? Uh, the, the water that we'll be drawing up, the actual seawater, is hovers right around 44 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, we've we've been monitoring it over the last years to to actually see what it is. It has a little bit of variability through the season and tide changes and whatnot. But basically, we'll get it up to our station about 45 degrees. It runs through a plate and frame heat exchanger, so it's a big radiator. Mm -hmm. uh, we transfer the temperature in between the seawater and our fresh water. Mm -hmm. That will drop it down. And your fresh water is a closed circuit. Closed loop circuit, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, there's no you know, contaminants getting in there for corrosion yeah, or, yeah, or right. stuff yeah. growing in it. Yeah. Uh, very important. Um, and then we don't get it cold enough, unfortunately, uh, to then deliver straight to the building. So what we do is then we'll pump that through our own chillers. So we actually do have chillers at our cooling station. And those are just for what we call quality control because we can't Make be sure sending you get buildings. up to the 44 or right. down to the 44. Right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll chill it down another couple of degrees then pump it out through our distribution pipes uh, to the individual buildings. So you talk about con you know, con I mean, uh, corrosion uh, elements, you know, with caustic mm -hmm. seawater and all that stuff. 
Um, and and so the the uh, the loop that goes or will go up and down Alakaya Street will be fresh water. And, yeah. And it, it won't have those contaminants. But what about the seawater pipe that goes out four miles, you know, and comes back into the mm -hmm. exchange? I mean, that's going to have seawater. What happens there? Plastic. Plastic. Ha. I mean, it's, it's not the best well, engineering plastic, word. Young but man. <laughs> <laughs> so it, um, I'm not sure what the final design is going to be, but it's some some plastic pipe that won't won't be susceptible to corrosion from seawater. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Try to use steel and see yeah. what happens. <laughs> concrete collars are bolted on, uh, so there is some steel that bolts these concrete collars together. Actually, the pipe Hold is it weighted down. down. Yeah. It's. Uh, um, and then there's uh, some sacrificial anodes that are attached to that. To, if there is anything that can corrode, mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that you, you prevent that. But um, you know, the, the pipe is very robust. I mean, even if you were to spring a little leak here or there in warmer water, we'll, we'll still be getting our you know, 65 inches of, of seawater from our targeted depth. So. Well, in a project like this, you really have to build it beefy. solid, beefy. <laughs> because I mean, you know, just, just just explore that, and I mean, you probably have other systems that will protect it. But if you are the landlord of a building, and one day the chilled water fails, mm -hmm. you know, whatever reason, your tenants, half of whom are lawyers, <laughs> and who have certain personality traits, <laughs> are spilling out, you know, of the buildings. And as they spill out, they're about. drafting pleadings mm -hmm. already <laughs> <laughs> about all the damages they've yeah. suffered because they can't do business in their law office and all that stuff. So <clears throat> how do you deal with that? Because this, you know, the threat, although the risk may not be that great, mm -hmm. if, there, if it happens, the threat is great. Right. Uh, a lot of work has gone into the designing the reliability of the system. I won't get into all the details, but typically the a district energy system, because these are all in place around the world, the reliability is much higher than a, a typical, what we call on-site, you know, if you're to be running your own equipment. Uh, then, so 99.999% reliability, and those numbers usually include scheduled downtimes for repairs or adding on people to the system, so. I hope it's two in the morning. Yeah. You know, yep. like, that they should fix the traffic problems at two in the morning also, no. but they never do. So that's a, that is one of the advantages of the system is that since we're servicing buildings are usually closed after hours and yeah. you know there's opportunity to service parts during when people aren't using air conditioning. So, um, but yeah, the reliability of the system is is paramount and um, you know currently with the systems that the buildings have there there's a, a level of risk you know equipment failure usually you have redundancy built in but even then you know you can have problems. Uh, Hawaiian Electric they do have every once in a while they have power failures and. Uh, that's the main driver for these systems. So we'll actually be able to deliver even without HECO, we'll be able to deliver chill water. So uh, You need electricity yep. too, though, to pump the water, right? Right. In order to right. pump it up all the yeah. cash for you, wherever you can put yeah. it, you have to have... We, we still pumps. require electricity. And you have to have this. Where's the exchanger going to be? Uh, right behind the Gold Bond building, 677 A separate building. Yeah, we're going to build a separate building. It's about, our footprint's about 25,000 square feet of space. So it's a very uh, small right footprint. Right next to Ilalo Street there. I or on the yeah, Malka yeah. side of it. On the Malka street. side, yep. So there's a okay. there's like a lot that they park cars in there right now. It's kind of a dirt lot. So okay, you're gonna let the the uh, the artists uh, paint the side of the building. I don't know about that. Uh, supposedly there might be a parking like garage above it, so there it might be uh, not a whole lot of building to be seen. But. <laughs> Sorry, Ray, you had something. No, I was just gonna ask. You, you say you're you're gonna deliver the water to each of the buildings at at 44 degrees. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would, what do you expect the return temperature to be when, when they give it back to you? Yeah, we we need a certain level of efficiency in the buildings, and that translates into what the temperature returned at. Uh, so we we require 50, 54 degree water back. So it's a 10 degree delta T uh, that we are looking for, and that's pretty common for the design of the downtown okay. buildings. All right. Some of the European systems actually require a 16 or 18 degree delta T, uh, meaning that the buildings have to run even more efficiently. So uh, it depends on, on your delivery temperatures too, but thermodynamics is, a, is one of those great sciences where you can pull efficiencies from a lot of different places. And um, you know, we offer incentives to be efficient as well, you know, kind of like similar to the electricity efficiencies right. if you're right. more efficient with our system because we have free cooling from the ocean, but only to a certain level. Um, we do uh, offer incentives to, to properties if they can use our 
cooling. So what, what does that mean? Efficient. Suppose they come back with water that's 60 degrees. What are you going to do to We that? actually give them a dollar rebate on their... If, if they come back at the right, right temperature. If they come back at a higher temperature. If they come back at the right temperature, the cost is, is uh, what, what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so, but if they come back more efficiently, we'll actually give a dollar incentive. That, that'd be a lower time. temperature now, would be, do, okay. Do, do you, uh, in terms of talking to a customer, potential mm -hmm. customer, potential customer theoretically doesn't have his mechanical engineer right, right there, by yeah. his side. Sure. So when you're talking to him, do, do, you, um, do you attempt to help them understand what, what they can do to enhance their, uh, the cost effectiveness of what, yeah. you're, what you're selling? Yeah. And what, can, can you tell us what is on their side that they have to uh, construct in order to plug into the yeah, system? Right. Um, part of the back to the, to the question of how much the rebate is, is it's sort of a fixed number because each building is so different. You know, some have their chillers on the roof, some have in the bottom. Mm. So it, it's not necessarily that based on the size of the building, this is your cost to convert. Um, some is easier, you know, you, we just poke in through the building wall and we can hook up. Others, we're going to have to go up to the roof and, and the 20 or 30 story building is not as easy. Mm -hmm. But basically, if you think of um, a plumbing system, you know, like a sprinkler system that you might have in your yard even, it's just, we just plug into that existing loop that they have uh, basically and then we can supply water directly to their system or uh, in some cases where the building's taller, we have to actually physically separate it with another heat exchanger. But it is just plumbing. It's not overly complicated in the sense of the technical aspect. Uh, it does take a little bit of creative thinking sometimes to, mm. to find the best you way. You have to deliver at a certain pressure. Too. Yeah, and we deliver at a certain pressure, so we'll be able to pump our water through a lower building. What, what is that? It's 150 PSI. Okay, and that's um, not going to carry it to the top of a skyscraper. No, no. Because they're going to have yeah. to get their own pump to deliver right, it to right. the top. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do now. Yeah, yeah, sure. They probably have that already, yeah, so no right. sweat. Oh, well, I guess, you know, the question I would go, and this is something that I'm sure Ray's thought about, is what, so you have to be efficient. I mean, the building has to be efficient uh, in order to, you know, get the best rate, so to speak, and get it back to you at a reasonably cool temperature. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what can a building do? What must a building do to achieve that efficiency? Uh, how do I make my building the best it can be yeah. to get the best rate out of you guys? Um, well, just the, the benchmark is that most buildings will be able to just plug our system in and use it, and the, it, it won't be any different. Where they'll start to look for efficiencies is in the pumping, uh, some of the incentives you already give for variable speed pumping um, to, to maximize the temperature being exchanged between the, the air handlers into the air and, and the water. Um, there's coil upgrades that buildings can do uh, in the actual, what they call the the uh, air handlers or the fan coils that actually exchange the water. Equipment, the equipment upgrades. Yeah, yeah, equipment upgrades in the building. What about tinted windows? Does um, that help? That will help lower the, the actual cooling load, but as far as increasing the efficiency, it, it doesn't necessarily apply what, to What that. about buildings? I was in a building today, a downtown building, and the, the front door was open. I mean, sure. wide open. Yeah. And as you walked in the building, you felt, Cold Ray, air. you should have been there. You would have given them a ticket or something. <laughs> the, war, the I'm not going to tell you what building it was. The, the cold air is piling out into the street in great gusts of cold air and saying, this is costing somebody a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Does that matter to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, anything the building can do to be more efficient with their air conditioning energy, it will result in lower costs from our side as well. So. Well, I mean, I think it's really important that you are encouraging efficiency mm -hmm. by giving them better rate if they deliver the, yeah. uh, the, the return water. At it. And that's one of the challenges for the, for like you say, when you speak to an owner, I mean, uh, there's so many opportunities to make your air conditioning more efficient, whether you have a window shaker or, uh, you know, the most sophisticated cooling towers and, and chillers, centrifugal chillers. I mean, there, there's endless amounts of way to, to make your current or future air conditioning more efficient and save money. So there's, um, there's endless ways uh, and opportunities. So I have one last question for you before Ray does our, you know, our summary. Um, hmm. um, you know, uh, that's a double question. Uh, <laughs> uh, where is this going to go from here? 
In other words, you know, uh, when are we going to reach nirvana on mm -hmm. this? And what is what is past nirvana? In other words, so you you have a federal building, you have a number of buildings, and I guess in Kaka'ako and also in the downtown you know, high high uh, high rise area. Um, when how is that going to unfold? Uh, and the second part of it is, um, you know, wh wh actually, why do I why do I care? Why do I care what happens? I don't care. Do I care? Yeah, you do. You do okay. care, Jay. Um, well, on the short term horizon. We are poised to start construction. Like I said, we need customer commitments, and that's sort of our last uh, critical path item. Um, once we have that, we, we feel like we can start construction early next, well, it's our schedule right now, uh, next year. And it's about an 18 month construction time frame. So, seawater air conditioning can be a reality within two, three years um, for our system. Uh, Next up would be uh, Waikiki is an obvious target, though so it's going to have its own challenges with construction and customers as well. I mean, that's a, it's Waikiki, just a long process. Waikiki. We're not, we're not talking about Waikiki now, though. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, Waikiki now can handle a system. It's just... There is it, no, there's nobody building a system for Waikiki right now. Is there, there is another group that's looking at it. We don't really oh. know. You know we're, we're concentrating downtown. Are they getting permits? Are they doing uh, what I you're don't doing? know what stage they got. We've got to get them on the show, right? Stuff, but. Yeah, um, they're looking at it. Um, you know, we're focusing on downtown. Uh, one of the things with seawater air conditioning is it's going to become more and more viable as energy costs go up. So, because construction costs will stay where they go, you know, they're going to increase a little bit. But if energy costs were to skyrocket, you, know, you could possibly see seawater air conditioning in single-family homes just because it's the competitive cost. If you can deliver, they're close enough to the water. Right. I mean, the development costs are really what drives. The the availability for systems like this yeah. to to uh, you know down to the small markets. Right now, it's not economically feasible to do you know smaller structures in a downtown high rise. But Waikiki would be a really good the hotel for that. usage. Um, Anything close to the yeah, the Pearl shelf. Harbor airport area is another target. Yeah. You know, some of the bigger resorts on the outer islands are good. So why do I care? Well, number one, this will be a huge uh, chunk of our energy dependence going. Uh, you know, from the oil that we've always talked about. Just to give you size of scale, this one project for downtown Honolulu is about 1% of Honolulu, Oahu's electricity usage. I mean, it may not sound like a lot, 1%, but it's, I mean, it's from a no. renewable energy scale, it's, it's pretty big. If you were to put solar panels downtown Honolulu, we basically cover all of downtown Honolulu to get the same amount of electricity that we're talking about reducing from this system. So just from a pure, pure space size, you know, we don't have enough space downtown to put solar or, or wind to, to drive air conditioning the way we're doing it now. So from an energy standpoint, that's huge. But pro this project and seawater air conditioning project in general, they have other environmental benefits. Uh, water usage goes dramatically. I mean, pretty much goes to zero. Sewage, most people don't usually think about those things when they think about air conditioning. But you know, those issues are coming. Um, the sustainability of the islands as far as water and sewer and waste is going gonna, is gonna to be a new hot topic, I think, and seawater air conditioning can help address those. Because uh, it's a closed system. Because it's a closed system, we don't use water to reject heat. You know, we use the sea, the ocean. Um, so there's numerous benefits, you know, re reduction of uh, harmful refrigerants uh, that, that you're using now. Uh, I mean, there's just a myriad of, of benefits that these systems can provide. Um, and just the long-term stability of cost of air conditioning, dependability. Uh, right now, we're kind of an unknown factor, but you know, the experience with other systems around the world is that they are, once they're in, they're kind of the way to go. And um, we think we're just going to be the utility, that, you know, another utility future. When you build a building, you say, okay, I need HECO, where they're going to come in here. I need water for a board of water. They're going to come in here, and I need air conditioning from, you know, the streets, and it comes in here. It's not going to be something that, uh, you know, kids of the future are going to know air conditioning as pipes in the streets and not uh, boxes on your lanai that, that blow fans of hot air into your, into your uh, living room. So. Okay, Ray, we only have one minute left, but what's your whole impression of this? Well, it's, uh, it's a great idea. It's been a while in the making. Uh, I think they're ready for the pieces to come together now and have that critical mass so that, uh, that, that once you get it going, it's like a nuclear reaction. I think it will continue. I think you're mm -hmm. right. But getting that first critical mass all at the same time is is the difficult thing and you guys uh, are working very hard at it and we we all hope that you will 
make it sooner rather than later because we really do need to continue our efforts to reduce the uh, reliance on fossil fuels here in Hawaii. That's Ray Starling. He's my co-host. Thank you, Ray. And Greg Wong from HSWAC, Honolulu Seawater Air Conditioning. This is Hawaii, the state of clean energy every Wednesday. We're talking about cooling our buildings with HSWAC. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you. Good luck on Appreciate this. It. Come back and tell us more, okay? Will do. Regards to Eric Masatomi. Yes. <laughs> CEO. Thank you. No, thank you.